Hello YouTube! Welcome back to my channel, to my subscribers, and if you're new to my channel, I'm Bonnie, Old Sold Mermaid, and on this channel we look at tarot, we do unboxings and comparisons, and all this is done through the lens of a 53-year-old ex-Mormon. So, without further ado, this video is an unboxing of the new mass market touchstone tarot by cat black now this deck was originally well it's been out of print for a hot minute um i think it it's been out of print since like 2010 i believe um there were a couple of printings one done independently and then another done by a very small publishing company that went out um, that went out of business and so the deck has been out of print um, ever since until recently when US Games picked it up and um, many of you are familiar probably with this tarot many of you have have it or seen it have the original versions um, Cat Black's other deck the Golden Tarot I believe it's called is a mass market deck available on uh, Amazon and anywhere else you can get, you know, mass market decks. So that one is readily available. I do not have that deck. And I also do not have the original Touchstone, uh, you know, one of the first two printings. So if you want to see a good comparison video of a side by side of those two decks, I would. Um, Push you over to Sunset Bow Tarot's channel because she does have a really good um, comparison video, and I'll try to link that below. So we're going to open this up, and the reason why I wanted to get this deck, and I saw it, you know, um, at the beginning of my tarot journey, at which on Sunset Bow's. Uh, channel I believe in somebody else's and it was already out of print and I was so sad and Sunset Bao often refers to this deck as her soul deck it's in many of her videos and she I, I, I'm intrigued by it and I love old Baroque Renaissance art and so I thought that this would be something that would be up my alley now, I originally got my first angel deck, um, The Influence of Angels, I did an unboxing of, and I think this is kind of along the same lines as far as the period of art. And maybe I will do a side-by-side -side <clears throat> with um, the two decks, but right now we're just going to look at this U.S. Games iteration of the Touchstone Tarot. And... I did get this originally from Amazon third-party seller because it's not available directly coming from Amazon's warehouse. It came from some, I'm in Texas and it came um, from someplace, a smaller town in Texas. And it, I was filming the unboxing and I found it was missing the guidebook. I was so disappointed and I, I sent it back for a refund and then I got this copy off of eBay and this copy off of eBay was cheaper on on um, Amazon I played $31 $31.99 plus some shipping and this one on eBay was $25 free shipping and I got this little postcard and it came from Grove and Grotto dot Calm. So it looks like it's a little metaphysical shop. I don't know where they are. I can't remember. Um, but I'm going to go on their website and uh, check them out and see what other goodies I can find on this website. That's a very cute postcard. All right. So to the book, the the box is very lush. It, it's got gold foil. You can see some little scroll art. Very beautiful production, but it does have, of course, the US Games UPC. 
um, let's look at the back. For Touchstone Tarot, Cat Black created sumptuous tarot collages from Baroque masterpieces, bringing new layers of meanings to readings. The sensual portraits are imbued with subtle facial expressions and nuances that can help the reader intuitively connect with the cards. Familiar writer Waite Smith imagery makes Touchstone Tarot accessible for readers at every level of experience. This deluxe 80 card deck with gold gilt edges and accents comes in an elegant box with a 108 page illustrated guidebook presenting card meanings, card spreads, and art references. That's important. I like to know the art references so very sturdy great US games box and look at this beautiful book very beautiful I know y'all want to look at the cards first so we'll do that um, we'll get the cards open and then I'll zoom in so we can get a closer look. Now these are um, edged in a metallic gold. Um, we'll see how this wears over time, if it's going to flake off or if it's just going to wear nicely with use and time. Now let's see. Oh, the backs are very beautiful and the, the, the backs I know are different from the indie version or the um, the original printing by the now defunct uh, publisher. So I know the backs have been changed and the card stock is changed. This is a gloss. This is a glossy card stock and uh, we'll see how it shuffles at the end and the original the older version was a matte cardstock but that version you can still find copies on eBay but they're running for you know minimum of two hundred dollars so at twenty five dollars with the same in imagery you know I'm very tempted for that deck and the Bohemian Gothic. I'm trying to get my hands on that. Now I will say kudos to US games they do have their little um, stamp, but it is ever so small. It, there's one right here and then one at the top. But it's blended in so well with the, um, with the back of the card, the colors, that it's unobtrusive. All right, so let's look at the cards. Now, one thing I did notice with um, the, uh, the older version and this version, as there's more border on this version. There's definitely more border. I think this white part was added to it. So that's one thing to consider. But there's the Fool. The Magician. So, like the back of the box said, this is, you know, the base. Oh, it's a little bit textured here with the with the border, with the gold foil. You can kind of see where it's kind of a little bit raised. Um, so you got the main original masterpiece artwork, but then it has been digitally manipulated uh, to include some of the symbology of the traditional, you know, tarot. Beautiful High Priestess. The Empress. The Emperor. Let's see if I can get in just a touch closer. There we go. The Hierophant. Very traditional. The Lovers. Very uh, Adam and Eve chorus. The Chariot. The 
There's no horses, but you know, from her headgear, you can get the feel of movement. And then I think there's been the front of a chariot here added. It's very powerful. Uh, the strength card, this artwork was on the cover of the box of the older version. The Hermit. The Wheel of Fortune. Justice. Now I've seen quite a few owls so far in this deck. The Hanged Man. Now he's not upside down, but he is um, in a predicament here. It almost, it's like, I don't know the original artwork of this, but it almost seems like this is Christ. Mm. And just, well, uh, I'll try to remember and, and take a look at the guidebook of the original artwork if it has a, um, you know, title. Death. Temperance. The devil, I love this devil card. And one of, the, one of the things that Sunset Bao mentioned about this deck and why it's her soul deck, it's like her call out deck um, because the most of the cards in here, they, they do, it looks like they're looking right through you, into you, they can read your mind. So it's kind of an intimate experience. And I think it's like a deck that she uses solely for herself. I think she mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, the tower. The star. The moon. Baby on the horse for the sun. I don't know, this baby's face is pretty cute though. And the horse is quite beautiful. Judgment. Now I find a lot right now, uh, at this time, you know, religious imagery you know, is triggering. The Hierophant card for me is triggering. Sometimes the Judgment card can be because of my religious background. This is the world. But when it's this Baroque, Renaissance, or medieval art, it's less so just because I know, you know, the history, um, Ace of Wands. Now, I do love these pops of color. I love the red. So it looks like there's gonna be pops of color of red in the suits. Because here again, two of wands. Um, yeah, so, you know, religion was everything back then. You know, the Catholic Church had a stronghold until the Reformation. And even after that, you know, the Catholic Church was all powerful. I do like his face. I find the eyes very soulful. I think he's quite handsome. The Four of Wands with her cat. And then look, some traditional RWS imagery in the background. This is very well done. The Five of Wands. Six 
Six of Wands. Now this looks like, okay, this gentleman is coming in um, being heralded as the hero. This guy, I don't know if you can see him, looks like someone in the background. Um, reminds me kind of like the War of the Roses. This is Edward IV um, taking his throne and this is um, Neville. The kingmaker, his cousin, who is um, not long after he takes the throne, is already uh, making plans to knock him off his throne and put his brother on the throne. That's just what it reminds me of. It has a very War of the Roses. And I guess the timing. Um, actually, no, this armor is later than, than the War of the Roses, but you get my meaning. A little bit of English history. Seven of Wands. Eight of Wands. I love this card. It's kind of like, oh, heads up. Got to think fast. What's coming in? Okay, I do know this portrait. And this is Jane Seymour for the Nine of Wands. And she was reported to be King Henry VIII's favorite wife because she was the one wife that did bear him a son, Edward. And she died of an infection, a fever, shortly after the birth. It was a long birth. And, you know, hygiene being what it was, she probably got some bacteria. Blood poisoning was probably most likely that killed her. But um, she was the one that Henry VIII married and be beheaded Anne Boleyn for. You know, that was, you know, she was the one after Anne Boleyn. So she died in, in, in childbirth and her son Edward only lived to be 17. He was king for a very short time after his sister Mary. And then after Edward died, Elizabeth I took the throne. So that's Jane Seymour. This is another one of Henry's wives, uh, Ten of Wands. This is Anne of Cleves. Um, but she was a lucky one to have escaped, to have escaped Henry's wrath. They were married for a very short time. They had the marriage annulled um, because Henry said he did not lay with her. He found her smelly, repulsive, ugly. She, he was reported to say she had a face like a horse. And this portrait was done by Holbein, who did a lot of the Tudor portraits. And uh, I don't get that from her. But the good thing for her is she didn't contest Henry. She didn't fight Henry like Anne Boleyn did. Um, so she got an annulment. She got a residence and she was relegated to the status of the king's sister. And she made out pretty well considering, you know, Henry VIII. Page of Wands. Knight of Wands. I'll try to go a little bit faster, but I just recognize those two portraits. This looks like to me like young Mary Tudor, but I'll have to double check that for the Queen of Wands. I'm going to put her over there. King of Wands. This is Thomas Seymour. Another Tudor. I don't know. Ace of Cups. So now we're in the cup, so now we see the pops of blue. Three of cups, this is beautiful. Beautiful, look at her sweet, all of their faces are very, very sweet. I love that royal blue. 
Now, this gentleman, from his attire, I would say this is a Dutch painting. Could be wrong, I'm no art historian, but it does look Dutch to me. The Five of Cups. Oh, the sweet Six of Cups. Seven of Cups. I love how the traditional symbology is put on her cloth. Very clever. The Eight of Cups. Maybe you could see all the cups are in the background. This is Henry the Seventh, I believe. Um, father of Henry VIII, known as the Winter King. He is the one that um, knocked Richard III off his throne in the Battle of Bosworth, and he is the first of the Tudor dynasty. Um, he was far down the line of succession. So, yeah. Interesting, that whole period, the War of the Roses. The War of the Roses ended with Henry the Seventh, and I believe this is Henry the Seventh. I'll have to double check, so I'm gonna keep this card to the side. Ten of Cups. Page of Cups. The Knight of Cups. Little pops of blue. The Queen of Cups is quite beautiful. The King of Cups. I thought it was Henry for a second, but it's not. I don't know. I don't think it is. It's not. Ace of Swords. Look at her dress. Look how beautiful that is. The Two of Swords. She looks familiar. Three of Swords, but look at her eyes. <laughs> She's looking, I don't know if they changed her eyes, but she's looking kind of down at the swords and like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But I think this is quite amusing. Do you see? The Four of Swords. The Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. I'd like to know how much has been, some, well, some of the cards have obviously been more digitally manipulated than others, but they had to be to add these suits. Seven of Swords. The Eight of Swords. So obviously the rope, the swords, and the blindfold have been added to this portrait. Nine of Swords. Ten of Swords. So you can see this is all very traditional RWS symbology. So a beginner could read with this card, um, with these cards, Page of Swords. Though I do, I think that 
when you're starting out in tarot, you should, the best thing is to start with the RWS deck, Knight of Swords, because it's the one that's most often used like and depicted in books, at least while you're learning. And then there are so many wonderful clones that you can branch out from. Okay, this is Mary Tudor in her later years when she's taken the throne after she's become queen, so known as Bloody Mary. So the daughter of Henry VIII and uh, Kath his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. And she was a formidable figure. King of Swords. I don't think this was her husband, Mary Tudor's husband. What did she, was she marry? Was it a Charles of Spain? Yeah, she was, I don't think that's him, but I could be wrong. She was just gaga over him. And he did not feel the same for her. Ace of Coins. Two of Coins. So in the pentacles now, we've got the green, the pops of the bright emerald green. Three of coins, the four of coins, five of coins, outside of a church, looking in. with the stained glass. I'm sorry if you hear my garage door opening. My husband just returned home from taking our pup to the vet. Six of coins. And if you are finding any value to this video, I would implore you very nicely to please hit a like, a subscribe, or the and or the notification bell. I'm a small channel and every little bit helps. Thank you. <laughs> Seven of coins. Eight of coins. Perfecting a craft. And you get that energy here. Oh, she's beautiful. The nine of coins. All the comforts of a lady. She's got her... Hmm, I'm wondering if they had cellos back then. I'm not sure, but falconing was definitely a thing back then. A popular sport. I'd have to investigate that. Ten of coins. Page of Coins, the Knight of Coins, how uncomfortable those roughs would have been. <laughs> oh, the Queen of Coins is beautiful too, in that green with her red hair. The King of Coins. I like my King and Queens to look like they could be a couple. And they definitely look like they're in the same household. And that they could definitely be a couple. And this deck does have the Happy Squirrel card. And it is... A reference to a Simpson episode um, so this is a nice little extra with this with this deck and I know Sunset Bow talks about this deck 
and this reference and her personal story and it's very sweet and there there is the title card at the end this is Elizabeth the first so there are a lot of tutors maybe that was Henry the eighth in the other card anyway uh, it says here, Touchstone Tarot, tell me true, this is what I ask of you. All of the artists and subjects of these paintings have long since died. May they reach out to you across the centuries as they have to me. May they be 78 friends you can hold in your hand. All right, so I'm glad I got this deck and it did transpire in person as it did through videos that I've seen of this deck and I am very glad that I have it a quick look at the book quick quick I'll just come up a little bit now I know the differences in the book the book in the um, older version is quite a bit chunkier and there's some extra artwork and pictures there's a dedication by Mary Kay Greer. I think most of the contents is the same, except the layout is different because you get the meanings, um, reversed meaning, and then in the original book you also got the art, and I think the art references are all in the back instead of being with each card. So, yeah, there was some beautiful extra artwork in, in, in the original one, and it's bigger and chunkier. Um, she goes into a spread, an introduction. There's a dedica uh, in dedication by Mary Kay Greer. And then it goes right into the, the uh, cards with a small black and white picture, thumbnail picture of the card, which is good. And then, so it has the um, the meaning, uh, well, it has a description, meanings, and then reversed. And, like, it has a little reference to, like, if you get multiple sevens in a spread, for instance, progress, but goals still yet to be fulfilled. You have obstacles to overcome and challenges to be met which is very, very cool. And then it goes right into the, um, the art references. Now I'm gonna pull, I put out two cards because I wanted to see who they were. Um, the Nine of Cups, I wanna see if that is Henry the Seventh. So we have to go all the way, oh wait, no. Let's do the Queen of Wands because I'm right, you know. Yes, I'm at the Queen of Wands. So it is not Mary, the younger version of Mary. I know there is a younger portrait of Mary in a red dress, so it is not Mary. But I'm, I'm sure it's that older picture of Mary that we saw. So it is Portrait of Katarina Beagel wife of Roger Lewitter, Amsterdam. So it's, there's Scott, uh, pfft, Scotch, Dutch. Um, 15, let's see, poor, da, da, da. so it was in the, Okay, so the window was added in. So there is all these references for all the other portraits she's added together. So most of it was from, um, the it's from 1500s. Now let's look at the Nine of Cups because I'm very... Okay, I'm wrong. It is not Henry the... Oh, wait. It's very hard to tell because a lot of the elements were taken from other cards, so it's hard to tell who's who. Okay, the man is actually 
uh, Hans Holbein the Younger, who pointed, uh, who who painted many portraits, well-known portraits of the Tudors, but this one looks so much like a portrait of Henry the Seventh. And if you look at pictures of Henry the Seventh, you'll see what I mean. Okay. That is very, very cool. Now let's see. Let me go up just a bit. Now the cardstock, going with the cardstock, it's thin. It's fairly flexible, I think. It's glossy. Let's see, they are kind of on the larger side for my little small hands. So I will see. Let's get up higher, sorry. They're kind of sticking together, I'm, but just like typical cardstock, I think they will, they're not super sticky, you know, where that kind of gluey, icky cardstock, like I think some of the Rockpool Blue Angel decks have, they, I think they will slide nicely with, um, with use if you are a riffle shuffler, um, I'm doing my weird side shuffle. You know, they do, they work their way through. Um, I, I can't do a traditional riffle shuffle with cards the this big. My hands, I mean, look how much, it takes up my whole hand. <laughs> so, um, but I think it's good for these cards to be this big because to get, the most out of the experience of the artwork. And like I said, I think they added this cream border to it. So there's a little bit more border to this than the original or older version of the deck. All right, so this is a walk through the new mass market touchstone tarot. If you've been with me through the end, thank you so much. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, beautiful day. And I will see you really soon with another video. Until next time.